right, so in this video, this is build log, I don't even know because I had my computer finished and I was having overheating issues with my R9 295X2. So I decided to uh, get rid of that and get the 980Ti and uh, now I need to put a water block on it. So this video is about the EK water block. Um, this EK water block is actually for the Titan X, but um, for the EVGA superclocked version, I guess it's using the reference PCB, uh, even though the cooler's different. This will fit. It says so on the EK configurator, so yeah, let's get the fans off this and put this bad boy on it. All right, so first things first, let's open up the uh, water block and see what we have in here. This is the back plate. It's also for the Titan X. I don't care, it's gonna be fine. So inside we have our thermal pads. Uh, these actually look pretty individually cut this time, which is nice. Uh, the last water block I did didn't have them. I had to cut them out myself, so that's nice to have. We have our Allen key, all our screws, some thermal paste, and some nuts. Instructions, I might need those. And of course, the water block. Now I got the nickel version. Uh, you can get a copper version. It's nice, it's not too heavy. And uh, it says Titan X on it right here, but this is on the bottom of the card. You're never gonna see it anyway, so it won't matter. Open up the back plate. And this also comes with thermal pads. It says Titan X on it, but that's okay. Um, it's not a big deal. It'll still look good in there. It's a hefty piece of metal. I'm about 98% sure that the ACX 2.0 cooler from EVGA, Super Clock Edition and Super Clock Plus, are the only versions that work with the Titan X block, so this block right here. Um, EK has other GTX 980 Ti blocks for the other cards, but this one was in stock and it was cheaper, so I went with this one. And uh, yeah, so I know for sure that it fits this and this uh, Super Clock Plus, and obviously all the reference designs. So from what I can tell, we need to take these four big ones off. That's obviously holding the heat sink down. And then there's a bunch of little screws all the way around as well. This actually has a nut on the bottom of it. I'm pretty sure we're not reusing any of these screws. But, in case we do, we need to save them and put them aside. So we can flip this around and the heat sink should just pull off. Yep, just like that. And there's two connectors. There's one right here. That looks like it's for the LED. Let's see if I can do that with pliers. Okay, so the LED's off. Now we can get at the fan connector. And there it is, it's off. So I'm gonna clean this off and put it back in the box. And then we need to clean this off. And then we're ready to put the block on. All right, so I just cleaned off the GPU. I forgot I wasn't recording again. Same thing that happened the last time I cleaned the uh, CPU on the other video card. But I'm ready to go now. And the first thing we need to do here is get these thermal pads on the RAM and some on the VRMs here. And the nice thing is these ones are already cut out. At least this much is. 
These long strips will probably have to be cut out for these. Actually, on the original one, they weren't long strips. They were just uh, little pieces like this. And I guess those just went on here. But I have a feeling this block covers these as well. Okay, so in the instructions, it's actually saying to put thermal grease or thermal compound on these, but I don't know if I like that idea. It says to do it and then put these on, but I think I'm just going to put these on because I don't really want to get greasy stuff all over that. Okay, I got all the RAM thermal pads on, and now I need to do the VRM. I need to do this section and these here and leave these open. Okay, we got all our thermal pads on now, and we just gotta put the thermal compound. I'm gonna use the stuff that came with the kit. I think it's the same as the EK Echotherm that I used before. Yep. Same stuff. Um, I usually put it on a bead and then spread it out. But in the last video, I just did a dot. This time I'm gonna try the line trick. and hope that that's not too much. It doesn't make a huge difference. It doesn't destroy anything as long as it doesn't just go crazy and everywhere. So there shouldn't be too much on there. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. This will, The block, once it's seated, will smooth it all out anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the block down first in the direction that this is gonna go, which is like this. I'm just going to flip this over and the reason why I'm going to hang this over here is because uh, the connectors right here are going to hang down and it's best to do it off the edge of this box because it just kind of like leaves enough gap for it so I'm just going to flip this around and line up all the screw holes you should be good to go Looks like a PVC washer every single spot, so. So one thing I just realized before I start putting all these screws in is the back plate. And the back plate actually goes on where half of these screws are, so. The only ones we need to screw down are these ones in the middle because the back plate actually screws on on all the outer ones. So these four back here and then two up here. So instead of screwing all of them in, I'm gonna leave those ones out and put them on after I get this on. end ones here get nuts so that one screwed down on there I'm just going to hold the nut with my finger here and then screw it on with the screwdriver. 
since I don't have that tiny of a wrench. That's it there. So, which ones get screws now and which ones do not? That is the question. So it looks like these two are going on the plate. These two here get screws. And these four back here are with the plate as well, so. Make sure you don't forget these washers. I'm sure they have something to do with conducting through the screw, or stop conducting through the screw. So from what I can tell, the rest of the screws are all held on with the back plate. Just make sure I got these tight. So now it's time to do the back plate. I'm going to move these screws out of the way. I guess I can put these caps on. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, you need to wash this block out before you do anything. You need to give it a good rinse. EK is pretty good, I'm pretty sure, and there's probably nothing in it. Oh, there's one more screw here. So, from what I can tell, they're showing thermal pads here and across here and then small ones on the ram I wonder if we don't need thermal pads on here because um, this isn't a Titan X the Titan X would have had an extra six uh, gigs of memory on this side probably and this is lacking that okay I'll put one on the GPU area anyway it's also showing one right across here after some consideration, I decided I probably will put thermal pads on here, only because these get hot, and actually on the SuperClock Plus version with the back plate, they do put thermal pads on their back plate. So, maybe that's what you need to do. I'm going to put them on here anyway, just because I have them, and then I'll be done. Okay, so now it's saying on the back plate, you need to put some right in the center here and then along here. So there I made the square in this piece, just like the instructions say. And then I filled all the, filled all the back of the ram here. That should be good to put the back plate on. Okay, so there are some smaller ones and some longer ones. So you need to make sure that you have the longer ones. So you need to make sure you have the longer and shorter ones picked out before you start screwing them in, or you end up like this. I got one that's too short back here that I started. And I'm pretty sure these back ones get the longer ones. I think that's it. Yeah, just as I suspected, those thermal pads don't even touch. So there it is. We got the block on and the back plate. Just like that on the 980Ti from EVGA, and it's the Super Clock Edition. Uh, this back plate and water block will fit the Titan X and any reference uh, design 980Ti. So, so if you want to know how to do it for a Titan X, it's probably the exact same way that I just showed in this video. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be putting this in my system and re-plumbing some of the tubes. Uh, just so it lines up properly because they this blocks in a different spot from where the 295 X2 was So I'm gonna be doing that in the next video. So stay tuned <laughs>